2018 Police Vehicle Purchase Request, Chief Felt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, item before you for consideration is uh, to request authorization to purchase four police vehicles utilizing funds from the 2018 CIP request. Uh, the police department has identified four vehicles um, to be uh, either replaced or one addition to the fleet. Um, I've outlined those uh, in, in your packet and available for any questions on that. Um, but one of the reasons that we're starting this process maybe about a month or two earlier this year is that we're running into about a six, six month uh, lead time in ordering any vehicles. So um, it's getting kind of jammed up in order to uh, get new vehicles <coughs> on the street. So. With that, I guess I would stand for any questions. Any members of the council that have a question for our, our chief? I have a couple of questions for you, chief. Yes, sir. Um, so last year was the big deal with Fergus Falls. Yes. Um, are we having any opportunity to purchase those vehicles locally? Uh, we have, there's a different state bid organization. They're no longer, uh, state does not work with Nelson Motors anymore on that. It's a different, uh, I believe it's a, company out of Brainerd or Bemidji, I think is where we order them. We could certainly check on lo ordering them locally. I know the Sheriff's Department has looked into that. Typically the prices do come in a few hundred dollars higher, but that is something that we could certainly check with them on. Maybe you could check on that before the next meeting and then it would be up to council as to whether they wanted to, you know, purchase local or to, you know, go off that bid. But I know that the um, Public Works did purchase their vehicles last, the last meeting from local vendors. I think they bought them from Switters, if I remember correctly. So um, I think you know our goal is to be buy local as much as possible, um, and so see if we can maybe get some put together that way. Sure, if that's okay with council. Just one thing to note on that is it would be a police uh, interceptor vehicles right. or police rated, which are different than the uh, the civilian market. So it'd still probably be about the same amount of wait time, but we would certainly check with those the local vendors on that. So. Thank you. Anything else for the chief? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is uh, Main Street USA discussion. Mr. Holland. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, about a week and a half ago, myself and uh, Councilman Fagerly and the Mayor and our uh, planner, um, Sarah Anderson, and I met with uh, a representative from PAM, and we discussed the, uh, the Main Street America program USA. This is a program that's nationally known. It's a program that I've worked with in uh, Chillicothe, Missouri. And this is a, an attempt uh, to re-energize uh, and bring back Main Street USA to uh, Wilmer. This is a, a program that uh, is interested in keeping the downtown or the Main Street of most small towns vital, keep them active with merchants, with activity and to keep the downtown as a uh, the focus for a community. And right now we sat down with um, the representative and there is some cost involved that we used to pay uh, other people here in the town to uh, coordinate this program. But um, the mayor asked that I bring this back tonight so that you could see uh, this uh, agreement that we would use and that either the city would orchestrate or that we would coordinate with another entity possibly here within the city, uh, such as the Chamber of Commerce. So I offered you to, to take a chance to look at this program. There is some administrative work that would have to be done. We thought that possibly uh, Sarah Anderson could uh, take this on initially to get the program started. I do recommend the program. I've attended two national conferences and I've seen the difference that Main Street USA has done in small communities. And as uh, most of you know, we are concerned about the downtown of Wilmer and keeping it restored and keeping the storefronts uh, occupied. So I highly recommend it. I, I think that everyone should take a look at it Think about it. If you have questions about it, you want to talk to me about it one-on-one -on -one and set up an appointment, we can sit down and talk about it. Um, but if you have any questions about Main Street or uh, the, the organization PAM, I don't know that much about the uh, 
Preservation Alliance of Minnesota, but they do have the title to that uh, property that is next to the uh, horsefly. Um, uh, it's not the horsefly, that's a, a bar. Foxhole. I was just in Montrose. <laughs> it's the foxhole here, horseflies in Montrose. I don't know anything about that, but um, <laughs> anyway. That's what we're looking at, and, and you, you know, there's a restaurant that's uh, trying to reopen down there, and, and I think it would be great if we could uh, be a part of it. So I'll finish with that. Thank you. Councilmember Fagerly, uh, your negotiation skills were fabulous that day, so maybe you can talk a little bit about that and kind of, uh, you've been, you're the council rep to the downtown, so maybe if you just want to make some comments. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I was, I've been the liaison with the downtown development for two years and then had some issues earlier in the year. But our dues haven't been paid yet uh, for this year, and they're supposed to be 2500 but we negotiated for $2,000, and I think it's important to continue so we can get reorganized um, and start the program again. Um, downtown development... They're still in existence, but we aren't funding them, so I'm not sure what's what's happening. Uh, but they do have many committees and a lot of good people working on their committees, and I'm sure if we get reorganized, they'll come over and continue to help. Um, the one concern is this Minnesota Main Street, they want two full-time people to be uh, working on this, and I don't... <coughs> I think there's enough for one full time, but they agreed that a uh, staff person would work for the time being until we get organized. So. I think they agreed to let us not have a full time person for five to seven years. Yeah, for a few years, so, right. which is good. So, but we need to get reorganized again. It's a good program as long as they don't buy buildings. The council have any questions about this Main Street program and then also the Preservation Alliance of Minnesota uh, or questions about the 313 building that Mr. Holland had referenced? Councilmember Nelson. Thank you. Just a question is, is there, is the other organization still functioning downtown, whatever they were called? Wilmer Downtown Development? No, there's another one. Main Street Wilmer? Main Street Wilmer. No. We've heard mixed reports on that. We don't believe they are. I haven't been to any of their meetings for two years. Okay. So Because they still do a couple of things a year that I'm aware of, and I think they were still collecting some dues. Flower pots. I'm just wondering if we shouldn't reach out to them. Um, Sarah's going to do that. Sarah's, Sarah's going to reach out okay. to that, that group, correct? Yeah. Okay. In other communities... Who are they attached to? I mean, you mentioned the chamber, but I don't necessarily see that. I can't speak for the chamber. I won't do that. But I'm just knowing their mission. Is, are, do other communities, does this fit under the chamber? Some do. Some, they're standalone. Okay. And some, the city takes it over. So. Okay. So uh, an example that they used with us when they met with us was um, Red Wing. And they had suggested that we reach out to Red Wing, and I believe Sarah's probably going to do that. But Sarah, uh, I'm sorry, Red Wing, it does operate under the chamber there. Also at Fairbolt, it operates under the, under the chamber. Um, I think there's probably four or five different cities in Minnesota where they operate under the chamber. And so it would... You know, and again, I think Sarah was going to contact the chamber and have that conversation, but um, it would be an arm's length relationship similar to what the CVB is. Um, and so what would happen is, is that it wouldn't be the chamber itself, if you will. It'd be like a, uh, another group within the chamber um, is kind of how it happens in these other cities, is my understanding. Yeah, that's what she said, so. Can I ask one more question? Does it fit at all with economic development? Does anybody do that in other, any other communities? We talked about that, too, and she oh. advised against it. Okay. So. 
Yeah, I think we mentioned a couple different areas where it could where it could potentially set. Um, and, and her recommendation is that the most successful ones do operate within the chambers, so or by a staff person. But um, Councilmember Fagley and I were both in agreement that there was not an appetite from either of us uh, to be hiring staff at this point. So see if we drop it now and then. In a year or two, the fees will be that much more, and then there's more uh, costs. So it's cheaper just to continue this way as long as they're allowing us to. Councilman Schwantes. Thank you. I probably missed it, but if it's not Main Street Wilmer, what's the name of the organization today here locally? We don't have one. We don't have one. Okay. I thought okay. there was a comment that there were all kinds of active committees. It's and Wilmer Downtown Development was our go-to people that we paid the memberships for. Okay. So. so, Rick, knowing that you've been involved with things, what do you see as direct takeaways that they provide to us for that $2,500? Well, they have grants you can apply for. Two years ago, I think they applied for a million dollar grant. They were gonna redo Becker Avenue and it was approved, and then something happened, and I don't even know. It just fell off the earth. So, but there are other grants that you can apply for through PAM and the preservation. So. Another thing is if we, if we dropped it and then wanted to bring it back, um, it would be you know, thousands of dollars just to do the research. And seeing that if we renew it for a year and then after Ms. Anderson has an opportunity to vet this um, and she comes back then and says, you know, we don't think we should do it again, it's a lot less expensive to pay the 2000 now than having to recreate all the work uh, to have it done again. Um, and, that, and that's the risk, is that if we don't renew it and we lose it, then we'd have to go back and reapply and go through the whole process. And what is the cost to do that, reapply and go through that process? Probably be five to 6000 It might be helpful. I'm familiar but not familiar with the specifics of it. Maybe we could ask for just some information. With <laughs> what do they do in Red Wing? What do they do in... Because I think they, there is a lot of good things that they do, but it might be helpful for us to get brought up to speed with what other communities are doing with Main Street. Um, I would think even if we went online, we could find that, but I'm wondering if we could ask staff to just bring a little information back about some of the other communities, their successes with it. Yeah, that's fine, but we are Wilmer and we're different. I understand that. We wanted it to be more of an agricultural basis here. We wanted uh, the kitchen and have the growers come in and. Uh, no, I, I get that. So I'm, I just know there are successes out there with Main Street. Yeah. So, I mean, we I can go online and look, but it might be helpful for all of us to kind of have an idea what, what's succeeding in other communities. Yeah. And Ms. Anderson is going to bring that report back, but we need to pay this uh, $2,000. And so that's why it's in front of us now. I would think that Ms. Anderson would have a report for us, you know, sometime. Um, I'm not, you know, sure what her workload is, but that'll come back to us in a report from her farther down the road. So, Council Member Meske. Are there only eight communities that are in this Main Street, Minnesota? With this map that I have on the front that has eight cities? I believe like so. It, yeah, that's, yes. We've, so we were one of the first. Okay, but of those eight, like and I'm looking at these different levels, and I see we're probably a big city affiliate, but I'm wondering of those eight, how many of them have actually gone, maybe you don't know, the accredited or premier accredited? It seems there's almost as many levels as there are cities in the, in the program. <laughs> um, I'm curious on what those that are in it for a while, do they move to this accredited thing, and is there a benefit of doing that? Because I'm looking at this premier accredited, and there's more check marks, of course, but then the dues are $500 a year. I think that does come, however, with a staffing piece. 
but I'm curious of those that are in the program, and there appear to be eight of them, how many of them have fully embraced this to move these next levels? Because is, is it worth us? For, I mean, we'll get the report, but it might be worth us even to move in farther or... I mean, I Mayor, don't know what the recruiting efforts are for bringing more cities into the program, but Mayor, yeah, um, part of it is it's the size of the city, which says how much you pay. It's not as you move across. I understand, so. but I think the size only is relevant for the uh, small or the if the network is if you're trying it out. Small city is up to five thousand, over five thousand, but then. I'm curious about this accredited level. Mr. Holland? Um, the, the accreditation process, there's different criteria. For example, in Chillicothe, you had to have an occupancy rate of your downtown. That was number one. Number two, you had to hold so many events downtown. Number three, you got more points if you had some code enforcement for historical buildings. Um, number five, if I remember right, you had to do one project every year, some type of capital improvement. And so there's a checklist of, uh, it's a, like 10 items like that. And once you do that, then you get accredited. And once you get accredited, then it allows you to get more funding from Main Street USA. And so that was one of the things I remember the director was always working on was getting her checklist, you know, knocked off every year so that she could apply for more funds. Thank you. Councilmember Nelson. So I was assuming you were bringing this to us tonight to vote on in two weeks? Right, right. yes. Okay, that's all I was asking was maybe we could just have some more information before we vote with what other um, communities are doing, so. Certainly. Yep. Okay, Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I'm still not sure of the benefit of this. I, I, I don't follow it. I mean, if it's, if it's just grants and, and they hold this carrot out in front of you, as our administrator said, you've got to keep um, checking off these items. Um, I, I, we can do that ourselves. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not convinced of the benefit. Um, I mean, I, I, all, all I heard was the goal or the... Uh, apply for these grants um, and I, I, I don't know, there's only a, a other eight cities and uh, until we check with one of them, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not for it unless we find out what, what stage some of these others are at and, and how well it's worked for them. I mean, we, we have been a member for how long and we paid how many? What? You get at least 10 years, I would guess. At 2,500 bucks a year or something like that? 2,000. 2000. Well, didn't it start at 1500? Probably started at 500 and then they worked their way up. Because I know they went through a lot of goals. They had to submit stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but you got to remember, they, they started the Becker market. Yep. They used to have a fundraiser for food. Huh. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. And there's other events, uh, celebrate arts and they're the ones that started that. Holidays. And the Holidazzo Parade. They all start out with really good intentions. And then the longer you go, I mean, uh, I, I don't know if we've progressed very far in the, in the years that we've been there. I mean, I, I guess I don't have a chart to go by. Um, so I'm not convinced of the benefit, basically. But there's a lot of people that work together on different committees. So they're coming together as a community. Under Main Street? Yes. They have like five <clears throat> different committees. They meaning? Downtown Development did. Wilmer. Wilmer Downtown. Okay. So. And they can't function without it? Is it, are they functioning to meet some of these goals? Is that what the idea is? Right. And they uh, come up with ideas on fundraisers, mm -hmm. get togethers. Yeah, I'm not sure where we're at on it. I, I guess I question it. And that's why we wanted to bring it to the council so that the council would have an opportunity to talk about it. And, um, you know, when Rick and I, uh, I'm sorry, Council Member Fagley and I sat in the meeting with them, you know, we felt it was beneficial to continue at least for this year again 
um, and then to have staff do a more in-depth analysis and then bring back a recommendation. Um, their recommendation may come back and say, we agree that we, we shouldn't continue it. But if we drop it today and it costs us, um, you know, a few thousand dollars to get back in um, without having done the analysis, it just seems to me like it would take that 10 years of investment that we've had or whatever it's been, basically just put it on the sideline when we could continue the process. It also gives us a membership at uh, some of their conferences uh, as well by being a member. We're allowed to attend the, their conference. So, yep. Council officials. Maybe, maybe we should, uh, between now and the two weeks uh, to decide on this, uh, get a list of the successes that have come from this, uh, from Main Street, uh, so we can kind of judge where we're, where we were and where we're at today. Um, I'm sure they're there, but I mean, I, we probably need to be brought up to speed on it. And um, then we can determine in two weeks whether or not we should go forward with it. It's a, it, it reminds me of people to come before the council and, and ask for things. It's easy to sell us aid on it. It is, but we got to think about those folks that put us here. Um, so I think a little more thought into it would help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there is $37,000 in the budget. And, you know, one of the conversations that we had when we were meeting is, oh, this is an approved expense under that category, but we wanted to bring it back for another level of vetting uh, through the whole council. So that's why we brought it back to you is to say, you know, we want to make sure that you're all on board with this as well. So, I mean, but otherwise the money was there to, 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 to continue with it. So Councilman McFagley again. And they do pay for <clears throat> consultants to come out here too and help us with the downtown and the community. Member Adam Arnson, architect, he designed the Welcome to Wilmer, the entrances. And he helped uh, Becker Avenue mm -hmm. design and He's the one also that said we didn't need a parking ramp downtown. Saved us millions there. So, <laughs> so oh, yeah. there's different speakers that will come out free of charge, too, because Pam will pay for it. Councilmember Meske, did you have a comment? No. Nope. Okay. Councilmember Schwantes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just note <clears throat> from my questions, you may not know, but I, I truly appreciated the response that you from Councilmember Fagerly. And uh, I, feel, I feel comfortable with it, being able to tie those activities to this organization. So <clears throat> thank you for the, the Council, responses. Council Member Elvarado. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councilman Fagerly. I, I, I'm excited about um, our downtown and the opportunities that may be present. I think the people that are supporting the downtown, and I can think of a handful uh, right off the top of my head, um, they want to see our downtown um, shine and look good. And, and I think by providing some leadership to some of the newer business, I think it's going to help promote that um, that international piece that we have down there. And I, th I, I, I think we have to provide the leadership that we can. And I like to think that by continuing our dues, uh, we can maybe help that along. So I'm, 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 for it at this point, I think we should move it forward. Councilman Nelson. If I remember correctly, when we um, discontinued the dues to Wilmer Downtown Development, we talked about coming up with a different structure to support downtown. And so maybe this will be a way to do that because I know I've been asked if there is anything going on with that. And maybe there's a way to utilize this discussion and put some energy back into getting an organization that functions down there with the existing, you know, the other organization that's still there. If they're willing to work together <clears> with <throat> some of this, that might be a, a reason to continue on with this, to try to find a way to have a, a another shot at downtown development in a different manner. So. Yeah, and that's what Ms. An Ms. Anderson will bring back to us. Additional questions. Good discussion. Thank you. Next is an update from the public input meetings that were held at the 
on the Civic Center. <coughs> Mr. Mr. Christensen, our Public Works Director. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, by way of an update, I don't have much for you as they just gathered information last Tuesday. And it was just dumped on your lap on Thursday. And it was dumped on my lap Thursday. Thank you. So uh, I can tell you, I talked to 292 Group today, and they are in the process of gathering and compiling the information they received from, from all of the sessions. They had about uh, seven or eight individual sessions during the day with individual groups. And then we had a public meeting set up. We had about two hours worth. I had five council members, the mayor. We had four staff members. Um, eight to ten members of the public, the newspaper, and so I feel like it was, you know, fairly well represented, for especially for a spring break evening. Um, so that being said, in talking to a 292 group today, they are they are compiling that information from the different groups, and they will they are putting those schematics and some plans and some details together for a later um, presentation to the council. I assume at another at a work session here in the next in the next few meetings, and uh, at that point, they will have some different options for you, maybe some different costs put together, but uh, definitely different some some schematics and some different uh, opinions and options for you guys to look at and discuss. And I would answer any questions you might have of the meeting. So were the overall meetings uh, pretty encompassing of all user groups for out at that facility or? Oh, Absolutely. I mean, what yeah. would be Let me uh, show you. a synopsis of the people that you met with? Well, I thought I could tell you. That's not opening up, but I can tell you this here is the, the list we used to uh, contact everybody. And we started out with, we started and ended with staff, you know, right be, or between the individual groups and the uh, public hearing or public meeting. So we started out with staff and then we had doesn't look like this is coming up. So we had um, track and tennis was represented, baseball, softball. Oh, there we go. Soccer, um, boys and girls soccer, boys and girls hockey, cross country, track, boys and girls tennis, football, um, baseball. They had the, had the athletic director was invited, um, and that was just of the high school sports, and then uh, or high school, middle school potentially sports. Well, that's good, and then. Uh, the associations were also represented, football, baseball, softball, soccer, hockey, and curling. All of those groups had individual, an hour of individual time with the group. Um, much of the same questions were asked if, to help generate some conversation, but uh, all of them were asked basically for their wish list. If, if uh, they were to get everything they wanted, what would it look like inside the building, outside the building, additional buildings, fields, you know, Everything from from open fields to domes to turf to concrete to you know you name it it was discussed. Um, there was staff at all of those meetings, and so I feel like uh, you know notes were taken both on two nine two groups um, behalf and staff, as well as uh, a lot of listening was done to the individual groups. Um, in talking to two nine two, they think they did this was better this way because they got individual requests for individual sports or individual activities in a better situation than, than they had the first time where everybody was, it was kind of a free for all. And so um, the thing was very successful. There was pages and pages of notes taken. And I think, uh, I think there, the schematics, schematics that you'll see in, in the next uh, few weeks would, will, or, or a month or so will, uh, will prove that. Okay. Council, any questions? Councilman Rasmus. Thank you. I see that a lot of the sports are represented, and I'm guessing maybe with the discussions with the staff, it was their input about the community center being on the complex? Well, there was uh, input on could it be included, but keep in mind this was civic center based mainly. Okay. Um, all along, this, is, this facility plan has been for the civic center complex, and so... Well, yes, these different facilities could be used as a community center. Meeting rooms were discussed, 
different uh, locker rooms, for instance, you know, for, for the different types of gatherings, um, dry floor events, things of that nature were discussed, but community center as a whole, no. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for your report. <coughs> Next, we'll have an update on the tree trimming program. Mr. Uh, Manzer. Yes, you can go on. Which one do you want? The top one. No, it's, this is a PowerPoint you guys put together. Okay, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, that's the policy there. Yeah. <coughs> See, I'm not the IT person. And apparently the messages won't come across. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> Maybe I'll right. just start. Well, Maybe. I can just start. So, uh, Mayor and members of council, thank you for allowing me to uh, talk to you tonight about tree trimming in the city of Wilmer. Uh, tree trimming is one of those things that can create a lot of discussion. I'm sure you've heard <laughs> pros and cons about what we do or what we don't do, or if we do it right or if we do it wrong. Uh, you can find a lot of different opinions on tree trimming. Um, I can tell you on staff that we have... Uh, um, right now we have one licensed tree inspector, that's myself, and we have um, Scott Ledebor. When he was here, him and I were both licensed tree inspectors by the state of Minnesota. It's a, a collaborative effort between the University of Minnesota and the DNR. And um, to do that, we uh, attend yearly seminars based on tree trimming and, and uh, talks about different diseases that we deal with in the, in the city. Um, Currently, we've got a couple guys signed up to go this spring to a class. So we're going to have probably three guys that'll be licensed tree inspectors. So I can just kind of tell you what we do. Tree trimming is done when the trees are dormant, which is winter time. That lines up well with when we don't have snow stuff to do. We can do. Um, usually, we start the year out. Uh, throughout the year, we we get a lot of phone calls or emails from people that say, "Hey, can you trim my tree?" And we create a list. And usually when we get into the fall, we try to knock that list out. That list can be two pages long sometimes. And, you know, they'll have two or three trees they want trimmed. Once we get done with that list, we uh, have mapped the entire town out for the last, well, my entire time that I've worked there. And we've retained all those maps so we can look back and see what areas of town we trimmed last year and, uh, you know, where it's been and where we haven't gotten to. And so we try to get the areas that we haven't gotten to. Sometimes we don't get there when we need to get there, and that uh, kind of can cause a problem. But I'll kind of uh, walk through this a little bit if I can. Okay. Uh, we, we prune trees, you know, to promote health. And actually, uh, you know, we look for dead branches and dangerous branches, branches that may be rubbed together. We try to move branches that are stubs so they uh, heal better. Um, we don't top trees. That's one thing we don't do is top trees. It's kind of an old school thing that people uh, used to top trees. All that does is promote more growth. So it kind of works against what you want. We, you know, we, uh, we do a lot of trimming for people that, you know, have branches over their houses or uh, maybe in street lights. We personally don't trim for the overhead power lines, the utilities. MUC does all the uh, relief trimming of the power lines. We don't, we kind of stay away from those. You know, we uh, try to clean up intersections where there might be uh, some visibility issues. And that can get kind of contentious once in a while because somebody might have a hedge that's back off the offset, but the, the alignment of the intersection still creates a hazard. So uh, we kind of work through that with people. And, you know, nobody wants their hedge cut down, but nobody wants somebody to get hurt either, you know. So it's kind of a, we try to work through those things. And I spoke earlier, you know, we don't get the tree soon enough. Um, now, if you could see the tree on the, the right is a tree that should have been trimmed uh, years ago. It's got co-dominant leaders, which is the leader is the, you know, the peak of the crown, and they kind of challenge one another, another. And what ends up happening is they kind of, it's like they race to the top and they don't get, on the left, there's a picture of a crotch of a tree that's too tight, and that bark actually does not heal. And so when that does not heal, that, that tree will probably fail in a windstorm. So you'll see a branch, like if we have a windstorm in the summer, you'll see that that'll actually, that whole tree will fail because that branch will peel off. If you can see where it, there's like a bulging bark spot there, that that's not even, that's the bark is 
kind of ended there. It hasn't healed. And so that's one of the things that we look for. This is a tree that just got away from us. It was in a neighborhood we hadn't been to for a long time. We had planted the tree and we just didn't get back to get it trimmed properly. This is a Canadian cherry tree. It's full of what we call black knot. It's kind of a fungus that gets in the trees and uh, hangs on the branches. We'll remove these trees, but that's stuff we look for when we're trimming trees, different things like that. Um, you know, we look for uh, mushrooms, mushrooms on ash trees. They're pretty much tells you that that tree is probably getting to the end of its life. And those are the trees that we find laying in the street when we have a windstorm. So if we can get them out of there on our our time better than when the wind comes up. Okay, the the picture on the on the left is a tree, and that was prior to us trimming it, and we trimmed it on the right. And you can see how we cut back on some of the, the where it had co-dominant leaders were trying to race to the tops. So we you cut those back and, and, and you force the growth in the middle and try to get a more even crown out of it. That makes those branches stronger. It, it allows that branch to, to grow out instead of straight up. Tree on the right is just a tree that we trimmed. And the tree on the left is one that a property owner had trimmed. And, uh, if you can see that stub on the branch there, they cut it out about six inches off the thing. That thing will never heal and it causes a rotten spot in the tree and eventually it causes a spot for the tree to decay or get infested with some sort of a bug or something. Hmm. It's kind of how we explain to people about pruning trees. This is, this is information that we get uh, brought to us when we go to those different classes. The first thing I talk about is the stub, which I just showed you. The second Second thing is a rubbing branches. You got those two branches that, together there that would be rubbing. It would cause a, you know, to bark, to wear, and um, cause a pot, spot for the branch to fail. So we would trim one of those branches out of there because it's got a net. It's got kind of a, what they call a tight crotch there, and that's that allows uh, another spot for that to break off. It's not a very strong branch. Number three is a, what they call a water spout. That's just a branch that comes up and starts heading north, and, and you'll see them grow, I mean, a lot in one year. It's just amazing how much one branch can grow sometimes. But that's kind of some of the information that we, we get when we go to these tree trimming deals. And uh, it's uh, the guys that have done it for a long time do a pretty good job. Um, not everybody, I said, agrees on how you trim trees. You know, some people just think you don't do nothing with them. Others, uh, you know, you, you just trim a couple off the bottom, but certain trees that before they get too mature, it's really good to get up into the crown and try to shape them so you get them to grow the way you want. And when you, and there's a proper way of cutting a branch back. Uh, there's a, a lot of times there's a collar on a tree and, and you can see it if you actually look at the tree, you can see there's like a little collar. If you cut that branch off there, that bark just grows right over that and heals that tree up nice. If you don't cut it at the collar, if you cut too short, then they just don't heal well. It's really important that you find those right spots and to cut that there. And that's our start chipper on the right-hand side there. These are varieties of the trees that we plant. And um, so wherever we remove a tree, we try to get a tree back. We try to plant our trees on 40-foot spacings and we, we uh, we, we have tree planting easements in a lot of areas. We try to, a lot of the newer areas, uh, developments, it's like, I think it's like 19 and a half feet behind the back of the curb. There's like, whatever the right of way is plus about five and a half feet, for, or five feet for tree planting easement. And uh, so we usually end up planting uh, boulevard trees at about 18 and a half feet. It gets them off the street, yet uh, it, it allows, you know, for a nice plant in your yard. We try to, uh, um, talk to the property owners. We try to give them a choice of the tree tree that they would like to plant. But we like to have diversification. Um, earlier, a few years back, I'm sure you've heard of uh, emerald ash borer. Well, we had went through Dutch elm disease, and we used to take remove all the private trees. So any Dutch elm, any tree in Wilmer that had Dutch elm disease, we would remove it, no matter if it was in somebody's backyard or or wherever, and. Um, a few years ago, we could see that uh, emerald ash borer is w working its way, and, and we had a, probably about 65% of our boulevard trees were 
ash trees in Wilmer, and that's not counting the private trees in town. There's a lot of ash trees. I think ash were really cheap at the time when you replaced elm. You've created, you know, you create the same problem. You've got such a large amount of one tree that if we get infested with this, you know, we're going to lose it. So we've been working diligently, trying to uh, reduce our ash trees when we can, and we uh, have not planted an ash tree back for a while. We've got the, we're trying to get it so most of our trees are in that 20 to 25 percent of one tree, no more than that, if we can help it. And I guess that's what I have. If you have any questions, I know, um, you know, in the summertime, uh, no, we'll be planting trees. We plant probably we had, I think we ordered 175, and I usually buy some extra. We used to plant almost 300 trees, and then it was cut back a few years back, and we now we're trying to get up to about 200 trees, and we can easily find a home for 200 trees in Wilmer. So. It was, I think we try to get all the boulevards in front of people's homes take place. Then if after that, we try to find them in parks and stuff. Last year at the end of the year, Stacy's had a bunch of trees left over and she just sold them to us for cost. So we're able to put those in a bunch of parks and stuff. So um, the guys that, that there's, there's obviously we got new guys, but uh, the guys that have been trimming trees a long time have, are quite knowledgeable and real good at it. And uh, they do a good job. Um, like I said, sometimes it, uh, I think it gets, it can get monotonous a little bit, and yet it, it gets contentious sometimes, and so, you know, we work through that, but I think most of the part, people are really pleased, and I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a card or a phone call or a box of donuts brought out and said, thanks for what you guys did on our trees, I appreciate it, so, any questions, I can certainly answer. Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what about evergreen or pine trees that are planted uh, close to the street? Uh, over in my neighborhood, there's three of them that you, you're probably aware of that, I mean, the branches are out to the curb. Yeah. I mean, is, it, is that something you take care of or is that well, uh, homeowner? Well, we didn't, we didn't plant them. No, I know. But um, so uh, if it's, according to the, the tree trimming policy, if it's in the tree right away, that's, it's, um, it's up to us, or we are allowed to, even if they plant them, we're allowed to take care of them. Now, if it causes a vision problem or something, that would be something that we'd have to work through with the property owner. We've had that happen before where somebody planted three huge pine trees on the corner. They had a corner lot, and uh, I wanted to take them down, and they really didn't want to take them down, so we tripped them up so people could see, because at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to cause a hazard with something like that. They just, a lot of times when, People plant trees, they don't space them enough and they, and forget that a tree is going to grow and uh, we crowd them in too tight sometimes. And I mean, I probably was guilty of that myself prior to, to doing this work when you realize, you know, what happens. Because, you know, you, you take a, on that 40 foot space, if you take a mature maple or something, you know, you don't, it doesn't give you a lot of space between a mature crown on those trees, you know. So what do you recommend? I mean, is it something that you will maybe look at later or, uh, or how far does it they have to come out before you'd actually do something? I'm assuming you talk to the homeowner first. On this one you're t referring yeah, on to? The pine? Yeah, I don't think I've talked, I don't know about that one to be honest with you. The one I'm thinking about we did, we dealt with was in Fesmer on, um, on the corner of 6th and 23rd there. On the north side, there they've okay. got three big pine trees. But I mean, I'd certainly come out and look at it and, um, and see, you know, what, if there's something that we should do. Rabbits like it. I mean, they, there's a lot of money. Pardon me. The rabbits like living yeah. underneath there. They, they love yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, but we've had a big owl over in the neighborhood take care of them. <laughs> um, yeah. Every morning, there's this owl about two feet tall, great big owl sits on the top of my neighbor's roof. There's not many rabbits left there. No. Um, one other item, the, uh, when we used to have committee meetings, public works, uh, a lot of times we would be told when the tree trimming would be happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would normally end up in the paper or under our minutes or something. And maybe that's something you could uh, make the council aware of, just so it does get in the paper, because uh, the one incident we had with... Yep. Uh, well, and, and that's probably on my watch a little bit. I should, because, you know, what. 
we don't really do a lot of like random trimming except for mm -hmm. we, we do the re request that like somebody will call them and say, hey, can you trim my tree? I say, yeah, we can, but we're not going to get there. Unless it's a hazard, we'd address it right away. But otherwise, we won't get there till in the winter, you know, when we get things shut down or, you know, like November. But once we get through that, then we just pick, we pick a neighborhood out that we haven't been to for a while. And then we just go, you know, house to house and, and trim them. So um, it's probably a surprise at first, but if anybody lives in that neighborhood, I would think would happen to notice that we've been there for a few days, you know, <laughs> or hear us, you know. But, uh, you know, with with stuff today, I mean, there's no reason why once we decide where we go, we could put a notice in the paper or, or online or something, a website that we're going to be trimming in wherever, you know. Good topic for open mic. Have you been on? Open mic? Yeah. I was on once for snow removal, but not tree trimming. <laughs> Might be a good topic, though. I mean, yeah. just general knowledge for people. Yeah. Thanks for what you do, too, Gary. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for allowing me the opportunity to share, and you've got a good group of guys out there, so thank you. Councilman Nelson. Thank you. Kind yeah. Kind of twofold question. Okay. How do we decide where we plant the trees? I mean, some of the trees are planted right next to the street in neighborhoods where there are not sidewalks and some are planted further back. And I'm just curious with how we make the decision whether they're close to the street or set back further. So some of those decisions were made a long time ago as far as you know where they are in certain older established neighborhoods. But I could tell you that any new neighborhood now uh, would have a tree planting easement and those are 18 and a half feet. Those trees get planted 18 and a half feet behind the curb. And if you, um, a lot of times if there's sidewalk, um, you know, it's, it is it is kind of a confusing a little bit. I mean, we have a, a right-of-way map at work that we're like, okay, is, are these our trees or not? we got to look to make sure that they're are our trees or not. And we've even had it where we've had, we've had tree planting easement up to house here, and the next house doesn't have a tree planting easement. So it's just, um, and as far as the, the, the new developments that's established as part of the, the development of it with, the, they come with a tree planting easement. The older neighborhoods, um, you know, they plant in between the, the, usually between the sidewalk and the street, which isn't really ideal because then when they come to redo the street, that's pushing the curb up and it starts lifting the sidewalk. In my neighborhood where I live, the trees are right behind the sidewalk. Those were established, you know, long ago. I don't know how that was determined where they were put, but I know since they started with like, I'm gonna say newer neighborhoods, because to me anyways, like the Ortonblad area and College View and Pheasant Run, all those are like 18 and a half feet back for the most part. Okay, second part of the question, is it necessary to, do you trim the trees the same way? Is it necessary to trim um, for the ones that are further set back, where there's no sidewalk and they don't even reach the street, do you do you trim the same way that you do with the ones that are right along the street? Well, the idea of trimming a tree is for the health of the tree. So first of all, first and foremost, you know, we look at the shape of the tree and is there a branch or two or three that we can cut out of that would help promote the growth healthily, healthy? And then the... the um, Next thing would be low branches, you know, um, for mowing or, or, you know, or driveways with cars and stuff. You know, and then we try to lift them up so, you know, at least you can walk under them. Um, we do trim some trees a little higher along the, where there's bus routes and where our snowplow or street sweeper so we're not ripping mirrors off and, and that type of thing. But we really like uh, to get the trees back away from the road. It's just better for for equipment and buses it's not you know it's not just the city's equipment but it's the i mean we get calls from the bus companies or the delivery trucks or you know on and on any big trucks that hit trees but we uh we really try to promote the health of the tree that's really the key component when we trim a tree councilman plowman followed by mesky followed by schwantes Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Gary. Uh, yep. I think we've all noticed the, the crews out and about working hard, even right away in the morning, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm a tree lover. Uh, after the crews went through kind of in between um, 
the fairgrounds and the radio station, I found out there's a lot more tree lovers than me. Mm -hmm. Because uh, well, for some reason, trees get some people cranked up. Now, the, question, <laughs> the, the questions that they ask me is, what, what, what are they doing with all the trees? Where are they going? And my only, you know, I said, you know, I'm sure that there's a, that there's a plan there and, and uh, you know, that there's a grander scheme. After driving by and, and looking at it, I, I took it as, you know, probably... Um, a removal of a lot of overgrowth, but then I also did notice how you were mentioning the spacing on the trees and some of the trees that had better shape and better growth. I noticed that there are trees in there, and I'm hoping that the plan there is that they're going to grow back bigger and fuller. Yeah, that's kind of all the main questions I've been getting is where are the trees going? Well, I've gotten those phone calls too. So oh, perfect. Yeah. Right and and that's fine. I and I talked to a lady today that she was not real happy with me and. We decided that we were going to agree to disagree at the end of the phone conversation. But I explained to her that um, we just didn't randomly go in there and just start wiping stuff out. But a lot of that was uh, undergrowth brush, uh, was uh, volunteer elm trees. It was uh, some buckthorn in there. It was just, there was some old willow that was rotten. It was just, it actually is one of those projects that should have been done years ago. In fact, I can't remember when it was. It was like, well, I think the old gel hog was still here, so 20 years ago or whatever. And we had an excavator come out of the brush hog and just mow the whole works down. So, you know, we picked we picked some trees and saved some of the trees in there and trying to get a nice spacing. So if those trees survive, I think it'll look pretty nice there. And I told that lady, because I have had people um, deliberately call me and thank me and said that really looks nice and they really enjoy that. But... Um, I told her that she didn't believe me, so I said, "Well, that's fine." And and I said, "Feel free to call me." She was mad because the road got icy on on Sunday morning, and part of that was probably our fault. It was a, one of those mornings we didn't get somebody out there soon enough. It was Easter, and people are scrambling, and and uh, and part of that problem wasn't the trees; it was the warm pavement that grabbed the snow from the snow blown across and just caused the problem and, and so probably weren't out there soon enough for that person and I asked her because it was the same person and I said did you get through there okay she goes yeah but you know several cars were in a ditch I said yeah I understand that but we you know we all have to learn to drive for the conditions <laughs> and you know that was three bad spots in town but the rest of the town was pretty good so we'll get through it. I, I assume the area that where where there weren't healthy trees kind of growing in the gap there, not right up against the water, but the trees that are left seem to be spaced out nice, and I assume they'll fill in. Uh, just assuming from what you said, the areas that are maybe left bare without the growth, those trees will be replaced. Probably. Yeah, at some point we'll probably. I don't. I don't know what we have for trees this going forward this year, mm -hmm. but um, we will try to you know fill it in so it looks good, but. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't guarantee that we would be putting any there this year because we've got about 200 spots for trees right now that are in the residential area that we need to try to get back for those people. All right. Well, thanks again for what you do and just want to make the community aware that we're not on some crusade to eliminate trees. No, and I, and I told that lady, I says, my objective is not to make you mad. I mean, we're right. here to try to please you and make it right, but yet something, and not everybody, like I said, going into this, I can get, I can put a tree out here and I can run 10 people through and we'll have 11 different ways of trimming it, so. Yep. Thanks. Yep. That's very messy. Yep. Thanks for the presentation. I was going to talk about the same thing, but since he's the Lorax, I'll just move on to a different question. Um, <laughs> are there rules or policies for clearing around lakes? Because I seem to recall, I thought the Oaks had an issue with tree removal a few years ago. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I thought they got in trouble for removing those. And I'm wondering, is there a difference between city property and private property for doing that tree elimination? Or is there maybe other issues I didn't know about? No, as far as, I mean, I know there's there's rules about clear cutting things down, you know. Okay. But um, as far as, uh, you know, getting some of that invasive stuff out of there, you know, I think they want that. Like, okay. we have a fair amount of buckthorn going through the backside of Robbins Island too that we're trying to work on to get out of there. And do we leave the stump or the roots in place or will you grow yeah. those? No, we'll leave those in place. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. Councilman Schwantz is followed by Nelson. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the presentation. I think I've got some of the same folks calling me that uh, Councilmember Plowman has being north on, <clears throat> of the lake. Um, first of all, I want to say, I think it's fantastic that you send uh, some of the staff for training and certification. I think that's really important. There's a program through the University of Minnesota called the Master Naturalist Program, and they will adopt areas where they come in and do projects, and removing buckthorn is one of the types of things that they do. So if you ever want to chat more about that, let yeah. me know, and I can connect you with who can help with that, and they'll have volunteers come out and clear out an area like Robbins Island. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the question that I was receiving from folks as they were traveling um, was, did we contact the DNR because they also were concerned about the issues in regard to um, the Oaks was cited a number of times and that whole issue. So just a question for the public is. No, we did not, you know, we just have, have done this over the years and we just, you know, we did it, I guess. So we did not, um, I was probably unaware of that we were supposed to if we were just kind of doing on past practice what we've done in the past. Councilman Nelson. My question was kind of the same because I had questions a couple of years ago about people who wanted to do clearing along along the lake shore as you come into town or a beautification kind of project with that. And I think I was told back then that we couldn't do that because the DNR had had to um, have a statement or, or had to, mm -hmm. to do that. So I'm just curious because I think it probably will bring up additional questions with along Thompson Park and the other with can we do additional cleaning. Yeah. So maybe we need to find that well, one out for well, helpful for people who want to do that. And one of the issues that we ran into with Ella Avenue and especially the radio station is that um, throughout the time of winter, what happens there is that snow blows in around and over the trees there. The trees are so close to the road it dumps on the road and we saw we have actually have more of a buildup on the road. Plus the Sunday deal was a whole different deal but typically in the winter that used to blow through there pretty good and now we've you know we have really heavy buildup from the fairgrounds to about the culverts in there and so that was part of the reason it becomes kind of a safety issue as far as um, allowing that snow to blow through there. So that was in the Ella Avenue was another spot that the same deal that the snow would just, if it was back out in the lake another 50 yards or so, it would have a different effect than what it does right on the edge of the road like that. <coughs> Councilmember Alvarado. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Appreciate your work. Appreciate your team. They, they do a wonderful job. Hey, I got my question. You were talking about if there is a tree that you wanted trimmed or looked at by the public to call you. Mm -hmm. Is that like specific trees that, you have planted, or is it any tree in the city of Walmart? Could you clarify that, please? Well, I would gladly look at any tree for anybody. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I've had people ask me about trees in their backyard and stuff, but we don't have any authority to do anything with a tree. Mm -hmm. But I would certainly give them my advice, or, or if I didn't have the answer, I would find one of my staff people that are better knowledgeable, more knowledgeable about it than myself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but we don't have any. Uh, authority to, to do the work for them if it's off the right of way. If it's on the right of way, even if they planted it, then we could. Okay, and I just wanted that clarified. Yep. Yep. Okay. So anything within the right of way um, that we would do. And we try to uh, honor, I mean, we've had people doing projects in their homes where they want to widen the driveway or, or who knows what are they doing, a whole new landscape plan. We've removed trees to help them through that process. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for your report. And, um, and uh, I know I called you the other day when I had uh, someone had stopped by my house and said, what are they doing to my trees? <laughs> and uh, I know you gave an answer and they were pleased with the answer. They couldn't believe how fast I got an answer. So yeah. thank you for always being ready and willing to step in and assist the public. So really do appreciate that. So thank you. Keep up the good work. Thanks, your, men, your men do good work out there. So. Thank you. Good, good. Well, that's all that we had on the agenda. Um, Councilmember Meski, I know that you had talked to me about something you wanted added to the agenda. Yep, and I knew maybe it. we could have a conversation in regards to that. Absolutely, I didn't wanna put it on to the agenda until we talked about it at a working session, but um, a while back we had the six month evaluation of the city administrator and that went well. Um, but we had talked at that time about the one year evaluation and if we wanted to have anything 
tailor made towards that, that we should start talking about that at that time. Um, we have not talked about that and now we're approaching when we're gonna be doing that evaluation. So I bring it up again because if we don't have anything specific, um, it, we will probably go and revert back to, I would say using the same tool again, since we didn't have anything more specific to uh, have Ike look at or work on. So um, bring it up again and see where we're at as a council, but we probably need to move towards that or we'll just use the same instrument. Because to me, it would only be fair that if we had specific things we'd like the city administrator to look at to build on, he should be aware of those uh, before the evaluation process. And um, we've been remiss on getting that together. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with those comments. Um, I did have an opportunity to have a conversation uh, after you and I had talked at the end of the last council meeting, <clears throat> and I would really recommend that the council enlist the services of our new HR director, Sam, to assist with that process. Um, you know, we do have a hired HR director. Um, she's been with us a short amount of time. Uh, her evaluation uh, would be simply similar to what Mr. Uh, Councilman Meske, what you did, is compiling the information that the council sent. And being a confidential employee, um, you know, she would be well, that would be well within her scope of work. And I know last time we had the city attorney work on that, but it would be my recommendation that we have our HR director work on that. I don't really think that this is work for the city attorney unless there's problems, and then the city attorney obviously would get involved in that process. But um, that would be uh, my, my thoughts as well. And I do agree with you that we said we were going to give him things that we wanted him to work on, and I think I'm probably the only one that gives him things to work on. So, uh, other than at the council meeting, he gets direction at the council meeting. So, Council Member Nelson, um, I I think we had a list that we put together. It might be helpful if you sent that list out again um, with what we what our results were and the things that we had talked about working on the next six months. And um, I spoke up against it last time, and I will again this time. I struggle with um, having someone do the review. Um, that's a person that, that they have to evaluate um, or participate in the evaluation for someone they work for. So um, I, I find that difficult um, to do, both, both directions. So I would express a concern about having our human resources director do the evaluation. Councilmember uh, uh, Alvarado. Uh, thank you, Councilor uh, Muskie, for your persistence on this. It's, it's one of those things nobody wants to do, but it has to be done, so thank you. Um, my uh, request would be for the uh, HR person to maybe <clears throat> outline some, I don't know, I don't know if you want to call them bullet points or topics or ideas for us to look at and determine where we want to go. Um, I think sometimes the starting point is the hardest point. And uh, I just, I, I just, I don't know where to start at, at, on this thing. I don't know, you know, what, what points we want to address and where do we get started? Does that, I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but I think we have to have some uh, guidance or give us something to work with and we can whittle it down from there. Councilman Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I think that's probably within the purview of, of an HR director. I mean, giving and performing evaluations, uh, maybe establishing the parameter points of the evaluation Correct. and whether or not it's a conflict of interest actually with the execution of the evaluation. I think that's a separate topic, but Correct. we could get all that direction from our HR director and probably have it all set up, ready to go. And then, like I said, we can have the discussion whether or not it's um, you know, executable, whether or not there's a conflict uh, within the organization, but then at least it's all set up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Councilman Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The HR director can then uh, suggest, you know, the, the, how we go about it, but it's our job to do this, folks. Right. It isn't the HR director's job, it's ours. And Audrey brings up a, a good question on uh, conflict of interest with uh, uh, the HR director working directly for our administrator. But it's our job to do this. It isn't hers. And, and, and uh, if, we, if we had a labor committee, you know, that's where it would happen and come from. 
suggestion and bring to the full council. And uh, that's another item I put on uh, miscellaneous for this work session. Um, it isn't before you, but I was going to bring it up. I, we, we need to look at that. But I think it's our job to come up with this. And, and if we had a labor committee, that's where it would stem from, folks. Um, after I had the conversation with uh, Councilmember Maskey, I did have a conversation with the city administrator, um, letting him know that this was going to be coming to the table so that he wasn't blindsided. Um, and I think, um, you know, I don't want to put our HR director on the, on the spot, but I believe that, uh, you know, that this is the type of things that you do. I mean, you do evaluations, you uh, develop forms. It's up to the council then to do the review, as Council Member Christensen and Nelson have said. It's the council to do the, re the review. But, you know, if you could bring us some suggestions that we could review, maybe get those to Council Member uh, Meske and myself so that we can review those. Um, when this came up last time, I know there was a, a question as to, you know, what's, what's the mayor's involvement, and the charter does talk about the evaluation and uh, does talk about the responsibility that the mayor does have to make sure that it happens. And, I mean, we're going down that process, so that is happening. So, uh, Mr. Scott, I don't know if you have any additional comments you wish to make about the process or your thoughts on the process. I mean... Folks, I don't want this to be a big deal. I mean, last time we really made a big deal about it, and, you know, I mean, it, you know, our administrator felt a little uncomfortable with, the, you know, kind of the rigmarole we made out of it, and I was hoping we could do it less rigorously than we did last time, especially with having our HR director here. And our HR director was new last time. Our HR director is new again, but we have a longer period of time with having an HR director now than we had last time. Last time, I think we had about six months under our belt. So, Mr. Scott. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members of the council. The only comments I would make, or I guess to reiterate, I think some of what's already been said, which is to uh, underscore that this is a council evaluation. No one is performing the evaluation but the council, whether it's myself as a city attorney or the labor committee or a volunteer council member who uh, assumes the burden to administer the process. That's strictly support services to the council as a council evaluation. Um, so I certainly from my perspective uh, in our office, we work in other cities, HR directors typically do provide that administrative support to the council to complete the evaluation. Um, those would be my comments. Thank you. Well, I would, I would suggest, you know, to use the same tool. I mean, when you say we, we have a starting point, we did generate a tool well, maybe not us as a council, but we had it done. And we had a tool that we could live with, the city administrator could live with. But I recall when we did it that everything was really good on the evaluation, but in the conversation that ensued, I recall that there were people that said, well, I might have a concern here or here. Well, then I would say we have a starting point, and, and I would say for our HR director, we have that starting point, but it was the pieces that if you wanted to dig a little bit deeper in some of those uh, other areas where you may think there's improvement or places that you want to build on, that we would articulate those. If we haven't done that, again, I would say, I guess it's very easy to pull the same tool back out. But if that's the case, if you have a particular concern, it, it would be unfair to judge somebody on something that they did not know they were being judged on beforehand. That's my only concern as we, as we get closer and closer, I'm thinking we're just going to pull the same tool out if we don't have anything specific. So if you think there's something specific, I think the HR director can easily pull out our tool and, uh, and give that tool to us and do the tabulation. That didn't take a lot of time to, to do those tabulations. I think that's all you're asking. I don't think the, we're saying the HR director is gonna be involved in the evaluation at all. They're in a tabulation piece, I think it's, up to the council to come up with those other pieces that we wanted to evaluate if we did not. I mean, if we don't have any, that's fine, but I'm just reminding us that we are sitting there and we need to do that if we're going to do it. Okay, hey, so, um, so the HR director, myself, and uh, Councilmember Meske will work on the tool. We'll get it to the council, um, and then we, will, we need to get that accomplished by the uh, first uh, week in May. Also. Just a, um, I, I did request that we send out the document from last time with the 
what we had talked about working on in the next six months, kind of the summary document. Correct, and that is in the personnel file. Of I brought that in. I received that from Councilman Meski, and I brought that to the HR director, and the HR director did put it in the lock file. So that's where it's at. And so I'll work with the HR director to get that document resurrected and sent back out to council. Thank you. Uh, with, the, uh, with the notes that were attached. There's nothing else to come before us. Uh, we'll break into, I'm sorry, Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A couple of things I wanted to bring up. Um, one was the committee structure versus this uh, work session that we've been doing. I, I still feel awful left out on uh, a lot of information that we would uh, normally discuss in committees. Um, the public is without that information as it's going through our um, agenda, beginning of our agenda, a consent agenda. Um, so the only thing that's mentioned is, is the title of whatever that was. That's all the public knows, that's, that's all I know, even though we have notes in there, you know, 99 pages of notes we can read. Um, so I think we need to reevaluate we should take 20 minutes sometime and, and think about, is this work on or could it be better? Um, a, a great example is the uh, labor committee. I mean, nothing's getting done with us, the council is labor. It's, I don't see anything, zero. I know there's negotiations going on and somebody's talking about it, but we aren't involved. Uh, public works is another one. It's, uh, we used to get a lot of information from the public works director and uh, uh, from Gary Manzer's uh, position. Uh, what's going on, what's happening, there's tree trimming. We used to get reports on snow plumbing, how, how many hours they, they worked on it, and um, uh, we're, we're void of a lot of information, folks. At least I am, I, I'm used to. There's nothing wrong with information. You can get too much. However, when we're dealing with people that voted us into office, we should know what's going on. And I feel like I don't anymore. Um, that's all I'll say on that topic. Another one was opportunity zones. The city was not involved at all in those discussions. And they picked three sites in the city. And I come to find out that one of them is for another, should I say, income-based or low-income housing project that would go to uh, another firm outside the city limits. And then they want to build some in one of these opportunity zones. I have to believe that they knew about it before we did. This guy getting more tax benefits besides tax credits to go along with building these units. Um, do we have an update on opportunity zones? Do we, do we know where they're at with it? Because it's a rush, rush job. They came the 88th day and it was due in 90 days. Do we know what's going on? <clears throat> well, all, somebody... I, all I know is what I read in the paper. Um, when I read it in the paper, I called and talked to the city administrator. And the city administrator said he knew nothing about it. And... That's the last I've heard about it formally from the city. Um, I w did attend a Vision 2040 uh, economic development meeting uh, where it was talked about briefly, um, but it never came before us. It went before the uh, county board is where it went. And HRA. Uh, were, I wasn't aware that HRA, it went before HRA. They were involved in the discussions, I, I recall that. Yeah. So, um, so I wasn't aware of that, um, and so, um, so that's all I know. I don't, I don't know anything else about it. Um, we did receive some information from uh, County Commissioner uh, Amon that was put in our boxes mm -hmm. last week, um, and uh, you know I, I couldn't really tell anything by the information that was placed in the boxes, um, other than you know there were a number of pages of documents. Um, there wasn't an analysis with it there. Uh, well, there was a number of the amount of money that's been bonded, city, school, and, and uh, county. That was on the front page, if I'm not mistaken. You could see all the money that has been bonded in the past few years and what to do. The, the many millions the of dollars. Yeah, the indebtedness. <coughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't think that had anything to do with the Opportunity Zone. No, it did not. Yeah. That was just information he wanted to pass along to us. But we we okayed it, we agreed to it without. The council never agreed to it. I, I never believe it came to us, what, four weeks ago, wasn't no. it? No. It came to, the, so, came to the, co the county board, voted on it, but we never voted on it. I thought we discussed it at a meeting. Somebody, I'll look back on my minutes. Uh, I, I believe we did, I believe it, it was discussed before us. I think somebody brought it up in conversation. I don't remember. We never had an action on it, though. I think somebody said that 
this, yep. these zones had been initiated by the county board and we never talked about it fit in official capacity, mm -hmm. but somebody did bring it up at one of our meetings. Yeah. I brought it up in the, under mayor's comments. Yeah, that could be, that could be where it was at. Um, but, but I mean, the council never voted on it. No, but it's, yeah. it's done. And I think we need to have uh, some kind of an update on it, uh, see where we're, where we're going with it. And if it got approved by uh, the governor, he was going to make the final decision on it. Yeah, I mean, but, I, I brought it up at the meeting I was at and, um, I had a county commissioner turn and looked at to me and said, the council has nothing to do with this. This is a county issue. It has nothing to do with the council. And I said, well, actually, you know, if, if it's within the city, it'd be nice to know about it. So was my answer back to that. But, um, you know, and what I was told, and I talked to uh, Mr. Kleindahl about it, and uh, it was the last day of the county, uh, or the, yeah, the county board training that they had uh, where they found out about it is what I was told. And so that's why they had to do it. That's why it came to them so quickly. Um, I'm, I don't know, Mr. Holland, do you know anything different than that? No. You've said everything that I know about it as well. <laughs> so. Well, we're, we're kind of left out of the. Uh, well, it would have been nice if our, if our, you know, I mean, if the county representatives that represent the city of Wilmer would have at least called us and told us yeah. that it was being discussed at, you know, and I mean, I generally look at their agendas, but that particular day I didn't. And, you know, shame on me, I should have, but anyways. Additional discussions, Council Member Nelson. Just a clarification, because I had the county commissioner talk to me too. It was my understanding that the EDC worked on it for a couple of weeks and I believe that um, Mr. Peterson was aware of those conversations, but maybe it would be good just to get a report of what it is and where what's going on with it. Because I know the county commissioner that talked to me thought we should have been aware of these things. And so um, I also have read an article where it talks about cities should be working to negotiate with, to make sure that somebody takes advantage of these if they're approved. So. Um, if that is something that, that is being worked on through the EDC, then I think it might be helpful for us to get an update with how those places were chosen. They had maps on where the locations are and all of that information. So it might be helpful for us to be updated with that um, information that was available at the time. Because I know HRA was looking for letters of support and some different things that I've heard about too. So there has to be information out there that could be shared with us. Okay. Just before I, I'm, I share Councillor Christensen's concerns about the information that comes that used to be in committees, and we've talked about it before. Um, did, did we come to an agreement? Was that going to be on a future one? I know we have talked about this at the one year mark. At, Six months in a year, yes. And so I don't know where we are in it at now, probably another four or five months since we had the conversation. Is, uh, is it time to revisit that? Because I, I share those same concerns in particular for uh, labor, finance, public works. That's Those of us that were in the system before and saw what the committee structure was, um, like I, I've said it before, it wasn't a broken system and we had attendance issues. Um, I'm not sure, this is a new thing we're doing here and it's good for certain pieces and maybe not so good for other pieces. And we've talked about maybe a hybrid or something else but I really think it is a good time to go back and reevaluate how this is working. And the two things out of our last meeting that we agreed to was labor and finance, and we'd have additional reports on those on the fifth Mondays. And we do have five Mondays in April. So, Mr. Holland, can we add that to the agenda uh, on that fifth meeting to talk about the committee structure again? Can we add that? I'm Thank you, Mayor Calvin. I guess I'd like to, to also just explore maybe a different way of doing the work sessions. Um, I'm not ready to give up going back to the complete committee structure, but maybe there could be a combination of committees and work session put together. Maybe the time we meet isn't the right time. Maybe the structure, maybe we need to have a report from all four different kind of committees or four different departments, I would say, um, 
somehow built into the work session. I think there's a lot of good examples out there of how other city councils do that. So maybe we all need to do a little homework with what, how we want information too, because um, it, it feels like there are pieces missing um, both in our agendas um, a lot on a regular basis. And so I think it would help us to function better um, to get more complete information. And we need to figure out how what that means to us, so. You know, I, I agree with that, but you know, one of the things that the city administrator and I meet once a week, we meet on Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock. <clears throat> and I believe it's either the first or second question I always ask him is, have you heard from any council members this week? Anything that I need to be concerned about? And I think with the exception of probably two or three times, uh, he has heard from nothing, nobody. So communication is a two-way street. And, um, you know, um, do I communicate with Mr. Holland as much as I did with uh, Mr. McGuire? No. Do I communicate with him as much as I did Larry uh, Cruz? No. But do we have a communication style that works for us? Yes, we do have a communication style that works for us. Um, and that's just what we set up between the, between the two of us, that that's how we're going to do that. Now, if I have a question in between, I'll throw them an email or I'll call and say, can, we, can I stop in? Or if I'm in the office, I'll say, do you have 30 seconds or a minute? Um, and I'll have that conversation. But, um, you know, part of this is incumbent on us, too. If we're not getting the information that we want, we have to ask for it. So, um, but I certainly think that I do agree that it's time to rediscuss this again. I have no problem with rediscussing it again. I mean, when people ask me how are our work sessions going, I say overall they're going well. There are shortcomings of our work sessions, and uh, labor is a big piece of that. The, the labor piece is a big piece that we're, that's a shortfall. Um, and we've talked about that numerous times at this table that, you know, we're not happy with how labor's going, but, you know, we have a new HR director. Hopefully that's going to improve. Things are going to get better. And, um, you know, um, you know, we certainly can get an update uh, on the uh, labor negotiations, but that would have to be a closed meeting. If we're going to do that, correct. If we're going to get an update, Mr. Uh, Mr. Scott. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, an update on what precisely? Uh, the, where we're at on labor negotiations. I mean, that's on not going to be an op yes. open meeting, right? No, it would typically be in a closed meeting. Right. I, I plan to have it on the agenda on the 16th right now. We're going to have uh, a closed meeting, and we're, we're going to have an update on the union's negotiations. Yes. Okay. So, okay. so are we all good? Councilmember <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to uh, throw this out. Um, I, I work full time on another job. We have a meeting um, immediately after I get off work. I rush from that to this. And um, it, I, I liked it when there was a, something to <clears throat> something to eat between before the, the meeting, um, before we could get started. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, if we're not, we're like like children. If we're not, um, if we're hungry when we go into this, we're not going to focus. Okay, that's the bottom line. And I think there's, a, I'm not the only one out there that rushes from one thing to another. And you know, I uh, I'm lucky between point A to point B. I can stop in and uh, you know, quick down something, you know, it might be a lump in my gut, but it's there. But, um, but I don't, I don't think that we're, um, giving, uh, the people that ran for, um, office, uh, a fair, a fair shake by expecting them to come here after working all day and not having anything to, to, to eat and think about and focus on what they're doing. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Well, it was the mayor that made that decision, and the mayor took full responsibility of that decision. I so I will that. do that again tonight. But certainly, if the council wishes to uh, go back to that process, um, I'm not opposed to that. Um, I think we need to set some parameters because, you know, when this was originally brought to me, I mean, we were going to have a light sandwich with a, 
a glass of water and a, a beverage and maybe a bag of chips. And all of a sudden it expanded out to, you know, a, a full meal. And, you know, I don't think that was ever the intent. That was not my intent, and that's why I stopped it. Is, you know, I mean, I think a sandwich is fine. I, I mean, I don't think we need the whole full meal deal. But, you know, that's a council decision. That's, you know, I stopped it, and it's uh, certainly something the council could start again. I would have no problem with that. And as a matter of fact, I've been in meetings since uh, 1130 this morning, and, uh, yeah, my stomach is growling. So... <laughs> So is there a consensus to go back to that process? Well, I don't think the council ever said to get big meals. That just, that evolved somewhere else. Don't think we didn't, we didn't participate, but we, <laughs> we were not the ones that initiated. So did I. We did not initiate the, the enlarged meal. If, but I would agree with um, Council Member Alvarado. I mean, we, with the work session now, we do come here at five and some of us work till five and oftentimes we're here till nine or even 10 o'clock. Um, and that is, a, that is a, that is a thing. So I think if we go back to what your original intent was, uh, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Does anybody have a problem with that? Otherwise that's the direction we'll give staff. Mr. Holland, did you follow that direction? <laughs> yes, we can do that. Okay. Is there anything else to come before the order? Thank you. Okay, we'll be uh, adjourned until the regular meeting. Seven. Sure. Yeah, that's just that paragraph. Yeah.